Hello, high school basketball fans, and welcome to Crestview High School and the Ray Etzler Gymnasium for tonight's Northwest Conference lid lifter between the Spencerville Bearcats and the Crestview Knights. I'm Dave Bowen. Alongside me tonight doing our color commentary is Josiah Stober. It's the NWC lid lifter, a game last year that came down to the final possession, and Kevin Sensible's Spencerville Bearcats came away with a 58-56 win, and they went undefeated in the Northwest Conference 8-0. Doug Etzler's Crestview Knights ended up the season 7-1 and WC runners-up. Josiah, it's great to have you beside me tonight. What are our keys for Spencerville as we look at tonight's contest? Yeah, I had an opportunity to talk to Coach Sensible um, this week, and he really talked about the rebounding. His team's kind of struggled this year to really control that defensive glass Rebounding is so important tonight. And they also talked about they have to limit the turnovers. First two games of the year, 18 and a half turnovers a game. He said that's not acceptable for the expectations he has for this program. Uh, and I couldn't agree with you more, Josiah. Coach Sensible's teams are usually very tough-minded, take care of the basketball, and they rebound effectively. I'm sure we'll see improvement in those areas tonight. Coach Doug Etzler's team, they're 4-0 on the young season. They've had a great start with wins over Vanwert, Shawnee, Miller City, and Parkway. What are the keys for the Knights tonight, Josiah? Yeah, talking to Coach Etzler, um, he mentioned that, you know, you got to get the ball inside. And we know how dangerous Ren Sheets has been this year, 18.7 points a game. They have to get him touches down low in the post. And also limiting the transition opportunities that Spencer, they like to run. They want to get out early, see if they can get easy buckets. They got to make sure they can slow them down. Josiah, it's the Bearcats, which you are an alumnus, alumna of. It's the Knights, my home school. We're up here in the broadcast go, going against each other. It's going to be a great one. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a great night of high school basketball here on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School for tonight's contest between the Spencerville Bearcats and Crestview Knights. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Matt's Heating and Cooling is your home in the energy efficient zone. Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. The Spencerville Bearcats, they come in tonight averaging 62 points per game, giving up 53 points per game on defense. They will start. Will Sensible, the 5'10 freshman, number two, leads his team in scoring at 17 points per game. His, bro his brother, Owen Sensible, will also be starting at the 5'11 sophomore, leads his team in assists with 18 and seven steals. Evan Osteen also starts for the Bearcats, a 6'2 senior, second in scoring at 11 points per game. In the post, it's Carter Sutoff, the 6'6 senior. Honorable mention, Northwest Conference last year, leads this team in blocks, second in scoring at 11 points per game. And then Carter Orr, the 6'4 junior, number 24, leads this team in free throw shooting at 93%. The Bearcats, one and two on the young season, fell to St. Henry and Elida and have a win over Fort Jennings. For Doug Etzler and his Crestview Knights, again, 4-0 on the young season. They will start. A senior in Kellen Putman stands six foot one inches tall, averages 87% from the free throw line for the Knights, leads them in that category. Tommy Hefter will be at the point, the six foot junior, number 10. Jared Harding, the 6'2 senior, number 11, leads the team in assists, 16 assists. And then Ren Sheets, the 6'6 junior, averages 19 points per game. And Connor Sheets, the 6'5 senior, number 44, second in assists with 10 and has five boards per game, second in that category. Josiah, here we go. Yeah, excited for this game, especially early in the year. Two teams fighting it out for the NWC. As you said last year, this was the game that really decided the conference. So we're excited to get it started here tonight. Absolutely, Crestview working the ball around against a zone against uh, that Spencerville's bring to the table. Kevin Sensible, a man-to-man -man coach, but right now he's going to go with the 2-3 zone, Josiah, and I think that's in respect to the big guys that Crestview puts on the floor, and especially number 33, Ren Sheets. 
Yeah, not often do you see a Spencerville team come out in a zone, but as you said, have to respect the big man for this Crestview Knights team, you know, and also trying to protect his big man. Not, don't want to get any early fouls, you know, force them to the bench. Yeah, I think Coach Etzler and his team were prepared for man-to-man. -man. They'll, they'll adjust to this zone, but I think they thought they'd see man-to-man -man right away. Ren Sheets with an outside jumper with the miss. There's a transition offense for Spencerville. They swing it around. Out top now to Will Sensible. Goes to his brother Owen, guarded by Jared Harding. Will off the flare screen, up fakes, doesn't shoot it. Looks to his teammate, back to Owen. Owen gets to the rim, misses it. Nice rebound and offensive stick back for number 23, Carter Sutoff. Gets Spencerville on the board here early. Nice fluidity to their offense there on that first possession for the Bearcats. Yeah, as we talked about, one of the keys is just taking care of the ball. You know, and you saw that there. About everybody touched the ball on that, and a great shot there as a response from the Knights. Yeah, Connor Sheets with the baseline jumper. So the two big men for Crestview, they open up shooting the ball from 15 feet, one for two, with Connor Sheets making it right there. Again, Spencerville with the basketball then in their half-court set with the drive, number 13, the drive and the score. That's Owen Sensible. He picks up the bucket there. Nice penetration for Owen. Yeah, a new facet to his game. Really has been known for his outside shooting, but you saw there was able to take it to the rim and get an easy bucket for his Bearcat team. Tommy Hafner, inside out action a little bit. Comes up with the miss and good hustle there, but Evan Osting steps on the baseline. It's going to be Crestview basketball. We see on the replay here, the ball go out of bounds. Crestview will maintain it. Looking in the corner is Kellen Putman. Takes it back out front. Tommy Hefner will set things up for the Knights. Spencerville staying in that 2-3 zone. Will Sensible putting a little bit of pressure out there on Hefner, but Hefner gets Crestview into the set. Harding with the shot, that's short. Hefner with the offensive rebound, back to Harding, and it's a steal, nicely done there by Carter Orr. Here comes the Bearcats. Yeah, and that's one of those things the Bearcats will have to do is they have to rebound out of that 2-3 zone. Got to find a body and put, it, put, a, put a strong body on them. That's a great point. They have limited Crestview to one shot on both possessions. A miss there by the Bearcats. Here comes Crestview. Tommy Hefner over to Harding. Kellen Putman down to the corner. Connor Sheets, again, this defense very cognizant of where Ren Sheets is. He averages 19 points per game, shoots 80% from the floor, so you can see why you want to keep the ball out of his hands in a shooting position because right now he's made everyone pay thus far in the season. He has it right now down on the block. Back to Hefner. Um, Crestview continues to be patient, trying to work that ball side to side. You see him trying to get it into that low block there. Spencerville doing a good job so far, limiting the touches, especially of those big men, as we talked about so far tonight. As you said, patient. There's Connor Sheets with the, pen, with the dive to the basket, but it's deflected and the turnover. Here come the Bearcats, and they attack the rim. Will Sensible picks up his first field goal. Transition offense for, for Spencerville. They lead 6-2 to two halfway through the first quarter. Yeah, and Coach Etzler talked about that in his keys is they got to limit those easy buckets. Spencerville likes to rebound and push it. Have a lot of players out there that can handle the ball and want to start to break early. Connor Sheets to Ren Sheets. High-low action right there. Give Ren Sheets the bucket. Give Connor Sheets the assist. Here come the Bearcats. Good transition. Evan Osting attacks the basket. Good things happen when you do that. And we have our first whistle of the game. The foul is on number 11 for Crestview. That's Jarrett Harding, his first, team's first. And with that whistle, it's a good time to introduce our officiating crew tonight, Chris Ewald, Mitch Owen, and Brian Schoonover. So Evan Osting, he's going to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line and shoot two. Look to extend this lead back to four. Gets the first one. Does Osting. 
I really like the way Spencerville, they're attacking on offense, putting a lot of pressure on that Crestview defense here early on. Well, and you see they've switched the ball from side to side multiple times here, taking care of the ball, and you see those lanes start to open up in a great battle under the boards by Carter Orr. Yeah, great stick back by the 6'4 junior. Three-point play in reverse order for the Bearcats, extends the lead to five. Leith off the bench for Crestview, comes in firing, as does Hayden Parrott. Those two sophomores have been very, very good off the bench for Crestview, and Parrott picks up the three. Spencerville right back down the floor with the miss. Well, Crestview with a chance last possession, to tie. You know, it really came from an offensive rebound by this Crestview team. You know, Coach Sensible talked about how important it is for his team. They have to rebound, especially out of this 2-3. And good bucket there by Wren. Yeah, Wren Sheets with another bucket right there. Give the assist to Jared Harding. High-low action at Spencerville attacking hard. And that's going to be the second foul on Jared Harding, his second team second, as Evan Osteen's going to find himself at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line once again. Excellent transition offense for Spencerville. Well, and you see that came out of, you know, a, a made shot by this Crestview team. Spencerville got the ball out quickly, got it ahead, found Evan Osteen, and he was able to attack right away. So Crestview's got to work to get back, you know, on a make or a miss. They got to slow down this Spencerville team. Yeah, well-oiled machine it with as far as transition offense is a, is a concern for Spencerville. And Osteen picks up both of them, three for four, from the free throw line is Evan Osting here in the early going. Tommy Hefner with the basketball. Spencerville is now man to man. When Crestview took out Connor Sheets going down to one post, they go back to man to Spencerville. Crestview tries to get the ball into Ren Sheets right away. Good dig down by the guard. See if they look to go to him again. Well, you see there's a good battle down there between Number 23, Carter Sudoff and Ren Sheets. Carter Sudoff doing a great job of just forcing Sheets out a little bit higher and then the help from the guards helping down whenever he gets the ball in the post. Yeah, great point. We mentioned Carter Sudoff being an honor, honorable mention Northwest Conference selection. Ren Sheets, a first team selection from last year. Braxton Leith with the penetration. And we see the replay right here. The foul called on Will Sensible. That's his first, Spencerville's first. It's going to be out of bounds underneath for the Knights. And Ren Sheets will trigger it in. Yeah, I believe they gave that actually to Owen Sensible okay. on number 13, his brother. Thank you very much, Josiah. Ren Sheets with the ball in the paint. Crestview back to two posts with Connor Sheets back in the game. Spencerville stays man to man. Grady Smith doing a good job defensively there. Almost forced a five second count, but we got a foul there. Looks like on Grady Smith. It looks like maybe two hands, and anytime an official sees that, they're going to call the foul. Yeah, put, does put his hand on him. Maybe a little bit of a nickel and dimer there, Josiah, but Crestview will take the ball out of bounds. As you said, that foul was on Grady Smith. Unforced turnover there on the Knights. Here comes the Bear, here come the Bearcats in transition. Osting with the shot. Nice touch for Evan Osting. Picks up his fifth point of the quarter. He's really done a nice job here in the early going for the Bearcats. Well, and these points have come all in transition for the Bearcats. One pass there, and Evan Osteen takes a good dribble down, and well, as you said, soft touch. Nice defense there by Carter Sutoff. Gets the block on Ren Sheets. Here come the Bearcats again. We're gonna have a foul on Crestview. That foul's on number five. And we see on the replay there is Owen Sensible drives to his left has done that a couple times tonight he's finding a little bit of success with that shot fake and driving to his left and gets a well-needed break braxton leith with the foul his first crestview's third 
Nice pass there by Osteen. Crestview with the block on the shot, but it goes out of bounds. Spencerville will retain possession. If you're talking about time of possession, Josiah, Crestview has dominated the first quarter, but as far as the scoreboard is concerned, Spencerville is up by four. Done a nice job, as you said, transition offense. They've been very effective here in the early going. Well, Spencerville will hold here as Coach Sensible is calling out a play to run, unless you get a open shot, but Looked like Will Sensible lost the ball as he was going up. Yeah, attacked hard there, but unable to come up with the uh, opportunity to get the shot off. But Crestview, they turn it over right away. The only fortunate piece for that, if you're a Knight fan, is that it's a dead ball turnover. So you set your defense with 3.9 to go here in the first quarter. See if Spencerville can get a quality look. Here they come. Sensible, Will takes a shot, almost goes in for him. But at the end of our first quarter, Crestview 9, Spencerville 13 on our match heating and cooling scoreboard. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School. I'd like to mention our timeout sponsor, Metzger Financial Services. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419. 419- 2256067 or visit metzgerfinancialservices.com. So Josiah, a good first quarter. Spencerville leads 13 to 9. Your early thoughts here with that first quarter action. Yeah, as you said, late in that first quarter, you know, Crestview's done a really good job of moving the ball, but it's Spencerville right now with that four-point lead, almost all their points in transition. So I'm coach, I'm sure Coach. Etzler talked to them there in that timeout saying, hey, we got to get back, guys. Can't give up those easy points. You know, we see there a good shot by Carter or Carter Orr, just not able to knock it down. Yeah, defense was between him and the basket. That hasn't occurred consistently. They've been able to get some great looks. That time they had good defense, and they keep Spencerville from scoring. Almost coming up with a steal right there is Michael Woods in the game for Spencerville but the ball goes out of bounds off of his deflection. Uh, gives a, gets a nice round of applause as Michael Woods coming off the floor. Crestview under out of bounds. Run their out of bounds set. Nice defense by Spencerville. Ren Sheets able to come up with it fortunately for the Knights. Hayden Pear with the ball out front. And Spencerville's back in that man-to-man -man defense which we're accustomed to. Started that first quarter, I think, just to throw Crestview off a little bit with that 2-3 um, zone, but a great box out and a rebound there by Owen Sensible. Agree. Yeah, I, I really like the changeup that Coach Sensible threw at Coach Etzler there. You know, you're just used to Spencerville playing man-to-man, -man, comes with the zone and does a nice job. There's great penetration by the freshman. Will Sensible kisses it off the window for two. Nicely done. He is the leading scorer for the Bearcats at 17 points per game. Did not play in the first game this year due to a foot injury. Uh, came back against uh, Elida scoring 21 points and he is really getting things started here nicely for himself in this game against the Knights. Crestview with the basketball. Tommy Hefner, sticky defense. Gets a shot off, but the defense by Grady Smith keeps him from scoring. Here comes Smith with the basketball. Back to Will Sensible, guarded by Kellen Putman. Looks to go to his teammate, Carter Sutoff, but not able to connect. Rent sheets with the steal. Here come the Knights. Yeah, one of those turnovers Coach Sensible, you know, would like to have back. But a great pass inside to Connor Sheets for that easy bucket for the Knights. Connor Sheets does his homework early, seals off the block, gets the ball and scores easily. Again, post play, we're both post guys. We love it when we see it done well. It was executed very nicely right there by Connor Sheets. Yeah, as you said, you know, posted up early, got good position, got himself, you know, wide, could see his numbers. They made a great pass into him, and he was able to finish easily to cut this lead down to four. Hayden Parrott now guarding Will Sensible. Spencerville reversing the basketball, doing a nice job. Not letting the ball stick. Looking inside, there it is. Carter Orr with the basketball, good under, up and under, and he scores against the smaller. Braxton Leith gonna see it on the yeah, replay. Yeah, replay. 
<laughs> Finally got rid of the ball, still had it, and went up strong. Opportunity here for an old-fashioned three-point play. Carter Orr with four points in the game, an opportunity to pick up his fifth at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Carter Orr gets the point from the line to extend the lead to seven for the Bearcats. Here come the Knights. Tommy Hafner with the ball up top, gets to the elbow, elevates, does not score, will sense the ball with the rebound. Here come the Bearcats. Inside, nicely done. Give the assist to one. Owen Sensible, the bucket to Carter Sutoff. And with that, Doug Epsler is going to take a Metzger Financial Services timeout. We'll take one as well. It's NWC opening night action on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School, where the Knights take the Metzger Financial Services timeout. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Josiah, Coach Hetzler, still talking to his team. Coach Sensible's got his team out there on the floor. What was the purpose of that TO for the Knights? Well, I'm sure it's been the same conversation all week of practices. Guys, we got to get back. You know, we can't allow the Spenceville team to get easy buckets. You know, we saw that on the last possession uh, where Owen Sensball, you know, caught it, was on the run, made a great pass to his teammate Carter Sudoff, you know, for the easy bucket. You know, it's really been the offense tonight for this Spenceville team is this, you know, that transition. So we'll see what the adjustments were made there in that timeout. But we see Spenceville made an adjustment here with a 1-2-2 and two, two, forces a turnover. Absolutely. Here comes Will Sensible gets to the rim and draws the foul. But, yes, Coach Sensible makes the adjustment as far as showing Crestfield 1-2-2 two, two zone coming out of the timeout. They get the steal. Sensible fouled by Hayden Parrott. Parrott picks up his first foul, and that is the second for the Knights here in the second quarter. Will Sensible on the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Misses the first, has another one. Misses them both. So somewhat of a disguised turnover when you don't come away with anything from the free throw line. Spencerville stays in the 1-2-2 zone. Evan Osting at the top, long arms out there, making it tough for Crestview. The Knights got to look to penetrate gaps. Connor Sheets from 17, doesn't go, but Crestview's going to maintain possession. Connor Sheets can hit that shot, but if you're a coach sensible, you're going to say, hey, if it's not Ren Sheets on the block, I'm going to pick my poison. Let's make him prove it. Yeah, it looks like Coach Essler made a switch here by bringing in another guard to maybe see if they can move that ball quicker, get one of his um, guards out there to shoot from the outside. So we'll see what Spencer will they get into a trap here early. Jump back into that 1-2-2 two, two pressure here. Jarrett Harding back in the game. He has two fouls. He's got to be careful not to pick up his third here before halftime. And the Knights throw it out of bounds. Unforced turnover against that 1-2-2 two, two zone. And as far as the chess match is concerned right now, Coach Sensible, he's moving the pawns and the bishops and the knights and the rooks all in the right place right now. Crestview, a little bit of zone. They go to a 1-3-1. One, one. Yeah, it's nice to see both of these coaches, you know, really switching it up here as a shot by Owen Sensible. Not able to knock it down. Now Crestview looks to run. Jared Harding with the ball down to the right side. Looks inside, doesn't get anything. Kellen Putman from 17. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Putman. A big bucket for Crestview, much needed. And Crestview's going to stay in the 1-3-1 zone. Down seven, just over the halfway mark of the second quarter. Yeah, it's you're really different to see neither team exactly. really <laughs> known for their zone yeah, pressure. Yeah. But right now, two empty possessions from Spencerville. And now Crestview's had the opportunity to Break in transition, look a little bit like Spencerville. Ren Sheets with the spin and to the rim off the window. Owen Sheet, or excuse me, Ren Sheets with the bucket. There's a turnover, here come the Knights. Tommy Hefner 
to Harding on the right side, looks at Parrott down in the corner, back out to Hefner. Crestview scores here, Coach Sensible might think about a timeout. Wren Sheets with the offensive board goes to Harding, and right there, another turnover against the Knights. Nicely done by Carter Sutoff. Crestview staying in the zone. Will Sensible gets him set up. Such poise for a freshman, but not unexpected when you're the coach's son. Missed there by Owen Sensible. Here come the Knights. Putman with the bucket in transition. So we're seeing a little bit of flip-flop action. And as a result, Coach Sensible, he's going to take a timeout. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. Let's keep it here, Josiah. Again, we've seen, we've seen everything change. But you know what? We will take a break, and we'll come back. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School. Again, our free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Spencerville comes out of the timeout. Josiah, since Crestview went to the zone, the Knights have outscored Spencerville 6-0. to zero. Spencerville's had a turnover and three misses all on three. So what do you think Coach Sensible is talking to his team about in that T.O.? Well, I think he's okay with some of the shot selection, but, I, but it, you know, it might have came a little bit early, you know, talking about, hey, you know, maybe make that defense shift side to side a couple times, and then you're going to get that shot every single time. So, you know, we see Owen Sensible coming out on the bench here, you know, got a few words from his dad, which is expected, <laughs> you yep, know, coaching yep. his son. So I think we'll see here Spencer will just slow down a little bit and, and take your time in offense. Couldn't agree with you more. Spencerville does have a turnover there right now uh, in that last possession out of the timeout. Crestview with the basketball now. Wrensheet's on the bench getting a breather. Four-guard offense for Crestview. Connor Sheets in the post. Hayden Parrott looks to get it to him. He's Connor Sheets going to work down inside. Nice defense again. Great wall up by Carter Sutoff. Makes it tough. Spencerville in transition. They get the three ball look. Doesn't go down for Grady Smith. They get the offensive board, nice pass. Hooping the harm for Carter Sutoff. Carter Sutoff gonna go back to the free throw line. Excellent sharing of the basketball by the Bearcats, wow, Josiah. What a look there by Evan Osting as he fought for that offensive rebound. Almost looked like he traveled, but was able to gain his composure. And then that no look pass to Carter Sutoff was able to put it in and draw the foul. Carter Sutoff on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Converts three-point play the old-fashioned way to push that lead back up to six. Here are the Knights with the basketball. Spencerville in their patented man-to-man. -man. We've seen 2-3 zone. We've seen 1-2-2 zone. Again, Coach Sensible, though, he's a man-to-man -man coach. So is Coach Etzler. But the zone has been effective for both teams here in the first half. Jared Harding with the shot, doesn't go. Rebounded nicely by Evan Osting. Here he comes in transition. Looks at Grady Smith in the corner. Shot doesn't go. Crestview with the board. Here comes Hayden Parrott. Yeah, Spencer the sophomore really looking struggled to attack. Yeah. from that three-point line yes. tonight as Crestview hits a big one. Callum Putman hits the three-pointer. Give the assist to Hayden Parrott. It's a three-point lead with 13 seconds to go. Down low, it's Carter Studoff. Doesn't score, but follows his own shot and gets the bucket. Crestview with the look from half court. Tommy Hefner doesn't go. And your halftime score, a very entertaining first half. Spencerville 25, Crestview 20. We'll come back with some halftime thoughts. You're watching it all on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School where it's halftime. Spencerville leading 25 to 20. Our scoreboard sponsor, Matt's Heating and Cooling. Matt's Heating and Cooling is your home. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. estimate. In the first half, Spencerville is led by Carter Sutoff with nine points. Crestview led by Kellen Putman with seven points. Some halftime thoughts here, Josiah, for both squads. 
Yeah, for Spenceville, you know, continue to push the ball in transition. You know, it's all started by them rebounding. They did a really good job not allowing Crestview to have multiple opportunities uh, in the offensive sets. Uh, so we'll see if they continue to rebound and force Crestview to take better shots. And for, for Crestview, you know, had a little bit of success when they went to that 1-3-1, one, one, forcing Spenceville to take some quick shots, maybe out of their character a little bit, but they got to get back. You know, Spenceville scored in the first half. All their points came off for transition, so they have to get back, set that defense, force Spenceville to run offense. Outstanding points, Josiah. And again, this series lopsided in numbers, 47 wins for Crestview, 15 for Spencerville. You've been part of some of those Spencerville wins. And Coach Sensible, he's done an outstanding job of uh, getting some wins against the Knights. And it's a much more balanced rivalry here in the last few years. Our JV game tonight was won by Crestview, 51 to 13. So we get ready to start the second half. It'll be Crestview basketball. As coaches, we always talk about the first four minutes of the third quarter. That's huge tonight for both of these squads. Let's see how it plays out. Yeah, and as you mentioned earlier, it's kind of been a chess match between both of these coaches, you know, coming out in different zones, a little out of character for both programs to see those zones. But we'll see what adjustments and what the teams did at halftime and what they talked about to see if it really sets the stage for the remainder of this game. Agree, and Spencerville does come out in their patented man-to-man. -man. Nice job there defensively. Almost come up with a five-second call. Jarrett Harding has two fouls for the Knights and gets fouled right there by Will Sensible. Yeah, Will just reached in a little bit, tried to get the foul, but got the hand of Putman. So we'll see now for Crestview if they can run a set here as it's taking the ball underneath the basket. That's Will's first foul of the game, team's first of the third quarter. Well, just looking at some of the stats from um, earlier on, Spencerville 0 for 5 from the three, Crestview 2 for 5 from the three-point line. A little out of character for the Spencerville team. Has some shooters that can knock it down, just wasn't able to do that in the second quarter, but a turnover by the Knights. Nice steal there by Carter Orr. Here come the Bearcats. Owen Sensible. Attacking the rim and scores. Owen, oh, he can shoot it from three. Missed a couple of those in the first half. What do you do when the three ball isn't going down? You attack the rim with authority. He does so right there. Nothing like seeing the ball go through the net. Maybe the next time he gets the feet set for that three-pointer, he'll be ready to go and stick it. Knights on offense now. Oh, and that's the new addition to his game. Known as a three-point shooter as a freshman, but has added that attack in the room, but a great pass there by Ren Sheets for the easy two. Yeah, good defense by Carter Sutoff, but Jarrett Harding cuts to the basket. Sheets finds him, and a little bit of reverse action. Harding has a lot of assists to Connor Sheets. They turn the tables, Jarrett with, with the bucket. Spencerville moving the ball around again. There's Owen again attacking the rim. This time doesn't come up with the bucket, and Carter Sutoff is going to be called for going over the back. That's going to be his first foul, second for the team here in the third quarter. So the five foul limit, I know it's still early season, but five fouls per quarter, then you go to the line and shoot two. I think games have gone faster. There haven't been as many fouls called, but I think teams have been playing pretty clean as well. Yeah, I think the teams have made the adjustment and a great pass there into Connor Sheets as he just went over his left shoulder and knocked down the basket. Yeah, so it's almost, again, we talked about flipping the script. Crestview's got a couple quick buckets, yeah, in the half-court offense, but they've gotten it down low uh, via the pass, and they've scored here the first five minutes, um, the first four minutes here as the third quarter being critical. They've gotten on the board, Spencerville with the three-point lead and the basketball. Uh, another turnover there by Spencer, but Spencerville, but as you were saying, you know, one of the keys that Coach Etzler talked about is he's got to get inside touches, and both of the baskets here in the third quarter have been because they got their post players touches, so um, we'll see if that continues for Crestview. That's where we've seen a lot of success for them. And does Ke Coach Sensible think about going back to the zone, you know, because Crestview is getting the ball down deep at the backboard in the rim. Well, they're going to stay with their man-to-man. -man. Right now, let's see what Crestview does. Looking at a backdoor play, not there. Harding, now he's out top against Owen Sensible. 
maybe a little bit of a push off, but Sensible, good defense. And that is a piece also Coach Sensible's wanted to see improvement with his team here in the early going, and I think we've seen it tonight. Their defense on the perimeter especially has been very good tonight, Josiah. Yeah, and they're really getting after it, and we saw Owen Sensible on that last possession. We saw that backdoor play being set up. A lot of teams run that, um, but he was able to see it early, but then also force a tough shot you know, to give his Bearcats a possession. Carter Orr down low, misses, gets his own rebound. Tip's not good, Crestview comes away with it. Tommy Hefner with the basketball. Steal by Owen Sensible. Give him the bucket. Picks the pocket of Tommy Hefner. Pushes the lead back to five. Hefner calling the set. Harding looking in, goes across the top to Connor Sheets. He looks inside. They're looking for Ren Sheets. They get it to him here. He's attacking the rim against Sutoff. Draws the contact, and we see it here on the replay. Nice reversal for the Knights. Good defense, but again, Crestview, the players, they know where the bread is buttered. It's with number 33, the leading score for the Knights. Ren Sheets at 19 points per game. Give the foul to Carter Sutoff. His second, team's third. Ren Sheets shoots 70% from the free throw line. That's second on this Crestview squad. The Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. Locations in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. I I'm a connoisseur of Lee's famous recipe <laughs> chicken. I love it. I've been to three of the four locations. I've been to Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. I got to get to St. Mary's, Josiah. Yeah, you got to get the quartet there. <laughs> <laughs> Ren Sheets picks up both free throws. Those are the first two free throws on the night for Crestview. Cuts the lead back to three. Spencerville working the ball. Carter Orr gets Ren Sheets coming down to help Kellen Putman down there. Knocks the ball out of bounds. Spencerville maintains possession. They're going to go four across the baseline. Usually a set where you're not looking to get a shot right away, but we'll see a screen somewhere. There it is across the key. And Osteen comes around to the right wing, and he picks up a foul on Leith for Crestview. Braxton Leith, that's his second. That's Crestview's first of the third quarter. So now we're going to go out to the 28-foot line and inbound the basketball. Spencerville in a box set. Jared Harding with the steal. Harding looking to attack. Good defensive recovery by Org. Goes out to Leith. He hits the long two for Crestview. Braxton Leith with his first bucket of the night. Cuts the lead to one. Here comes Will Sensible right back at the Knights. We're going to see it on the replay. Transition offense again for Spencerville. Showing itself here in the third quarter. Sensible draws the foul on Kellen Putman. That's his first, Crestview's second. Sensible going to go to the free throw line. He is a 64% free throw line shooter. Comes up short on that first one, Josiah. Yeah, he's missed all three of his free throws tonight. The Lee's famous recipe, chicken free throw line. And Will Sensible sticks that one, and I think it's because we read the yeah. ad for him. <laughs> Got that bucket to go. I can tell the Sensible family they love Lee's famous recipe chicken. All right, Crestview with the basketball. Ren Sheets has it down on the block. Spins, again, great wall up. Great wall up by Carter Sutoff. Draws the travel on Ren Sheets. Good post play both ways. And I like Carter Sutoff's ability just to wall up and force Ren Sheets into the travel there, Josiah. Well, it was a good play by him too because he's already got two fouls. You see Crestview trying to get it get his third early, get him out of the game. You know, that's a big loss for this Spencerville team, but a miss there by Michael Woods. Here come the Knights. Jared Harding trying to get to the rim where he draws contact, and I think that's going to be on Carter Sutoff, and that's going to be his third. They do call it on Sutoff. So a little bit of foul trouble now for the Bearcats here. Coach Sensible's got a decision to make. Jared Harding at the free throw line. The Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line, and he is good on the first one. 
Harding, for as much as he penetrates, and we've seen it tonight, that is only his third free throw of the season. He's perfect for the line, from the line. Let's see what he does here on his fourth attempt for the year. Sticks that one in the basket, and we're all tied up at 30. Halfway through the third quarter, so the first four minutes of the third quarter, you got to give the advantage to Crestview. Yeah, they've done, they've got it inside, and that's what they've been looking to do all game. And, you know, now they got Carter Sudoff on the bench for Spencerville with three fouls, so Spencerville gets naturally a little bit smaller, so we'll see how this offense plays. And a great drive there once again by Owen Sensball to draw some contact. That was as, as we see here on this replay, coming off those screens, he's driven to his left multiple times, was going to pass it up to his teammate, but a foul called on Crestview. Oh, uh, Hayden Parrott picks up the personal, his second. Crestview's third in the quarter. Under out of bounds for the Bearcats. Brother to brother, Will with the ball out front. Looks at, yeah, looks at Evan Osting, and he shuffled the puppies right there. Chris Ewald on the call, and it's going to be Crestview basketball. Now let's see what Coach Sensible thinks about since Carter Sutoff is not in the game. Is he going to stay man-to-man, or is he going to go back to his zone? Again, both these coaches are man-to-man coaches, so when it comes down to crunch time, you go with what you do, and he's going to stay man-to-man, and I'm not surprised by this at all. No, we'll see now. Look like Crestview's going to try to work it in. Carter Orr doing a good job of forcing Ren out wide. But great move by Ren Sheets. And knocks it down. Able to go up and under and draw the contact. Good strength by Ren Sheets to pick up the personal on Michael Woods. That's the fourth foul for Spencerville here in the third quarter. Bucket by Ren Sheets. Sheets going to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line to give Crestview a three-point lead, the three-point play, the old-fashioned way. Here come the Bearcats. And I believe that's the first lead of the night for this Crestview team. Yep. Spencerville comes right back. Good tenacity by Carter Orr, but unable to come up with the bucket. All this happening with Sutoff on the bench with three fouls, so that's going to be a decision for Ke- Coach Sensible. When do you bring Carter Sutoff back into the game? I think you're probably sitting the rest of this quarter, but Crestview hits a couple more buckets. They may force your hand. Yeah, and you see Crestview this whole quarter is really getting it down low to their big men, and we see here they're really fighting for position. There's a battle going on, which I love seeing, you know, post players uh-huh. <laughs> battling back and forth, and it's all about getting position, and so far Crestview's done it well here in this third quarter. Braxton Leith with the ball in the paint, kicks it back out to Tommy Hefner. Hefner's going to reset. Coach Etzler calls a play. Sheets with the ball above the three-point line, looking for Connor Sheets. They try to go high-low. Usually you see it the other way. Connor Sheets trying to dump it down to Ren. They don't connect. We have the turnover. Nicely done defensively by Spencerville to force that turnover. Good aggressive defensive play. They're going to get the ball. Dead ball turnover. Here come the Bearcats. And really a big possession here for Spencerville. Haven't scored in the last couple minutes here. Have had quite a few empty possessions. So we'll see what they do here. Brought in another guard. Try to go with this five out offense here by bringing Michael Woods to the bench. So. We'll see now here on this replay, Will Sensible just being aggressive, taking it, and a foul there by Tommy Hefner. There's foul number four. Absolutely, four for the Knights. Hefner's first of the game. Good things happen when you attack the basket. We see it right there. Good look for Grady Smith. Does it go? Here come the Knights. Tommy Hefner kicks it over to Jared Harding on the left side. Nothing there. Kellen Putnam, he's going to go right inside. Crestview moving the ball. Not letting it stick. Hefner going to set things up now. The good defensive transition for Spenceville. Crestview unable to get a bucket. Almost a turnover. It is a turnover. Here comes Osting. Evan attacks, draws the contact, and he's going to go to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. And that foul is going to be on Jarrett Harding. His third. Crestview's fifth in the quarter. Evan Osting. 
Three for four from the line in this game. A couple free looks from the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. Big ones for Spencerville to stem the tide. Gets the first one. Hayden Parrott comes in the game. Jarrett Harding, I think he's going to sit the rest of this third quarter with three fouls. And then I think we'll see both Carter Sutoff and Jarrett Harding back in the game. Evan Osten, Osten good on both free throws. So back to a one-point game. As Keith Jackson would say, we got ourselves a dandy. And that's what we have right now with Hayden Parrott now bringing the ball across half court for Crestview. Will sense the ball, keeping him on the left side. Good defense. Kellen Putman on the left wing, looking in for Connor Sheets, not there. Good de interior defense by the Bearcats. Hayden Parrott attacking and takes the contact from Will Sensible. Will's going to pick up his second personal. Well, with five fouls here in the third quarter, Crestview's going to be shooting two from here on out. Hayden Parrott on the Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throw line. He is a 70% free throw shooter for the Knights. Tied for second with Ren Sheets in that category. Kellen Putman, the leading free throw shooter. Another thing about Hayden Parrott, he comes off the bench for the Knights and in their first four games, he's the second leading scorer right at eight points per game. So that's nice to have that coming off your bench, that kind of point production. Makes good on the first free throw. Well, and you've seen it even tonight. Comes in, he's very aggressive, looks for his shot, looks to attack the rim, knocks down two big free throws for the Crestview Knights. Pushes the lead back to three. Here comes Will Sensible on the left side. There's their transition offense with a ball screen. Michael Woods with the basketball, looking to go over Connor Sheets. Doesn't score, Ren Sheets with the rebound. Here come the Knights. Tommy Hefner down to the left wing. Hayden Parrott with the basketball. Spencerville defense able to take away any transition look for the Knights. Parrott from three land doesn't go. And we can't see the call or what happened down there, but the official can. And it's out on the Knights. Spencerville basketball. 49 seconds here. Uh, do you hold it for one, or is that too much time, Josiah? I think Spencerville is going to continue to be aggressive here, especially now going once again with their small lineup. Got four guards out there seeing if they can attack the rim. Still haven't hit a three all night here, which is rare for this Spencerville team. And with Carter Sutoff on the bench, but you'd like to just have this be the last possession, but it looks like they're going to attack. And Owen Sensible does again. I think at halftime, Coach Sensible told Owen, you know, the three ball's not going down. Look to attack. He has done it with authority here in the third quarter. He's going back to the free throw line. And that foul was on Crestview's Tommy Hefner. That's his second. And Owen hits the first free throw on the Lee's famous recipe chicken. Free throw line, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. Also, our annual funding campaign. Just a few more weeks left in our annual funding campaign at WOSN and WTLW. Make a donation today to get us closer to our $175,000 goal. Donate online at axeministries.com. Hayden Parrott with the basketball. I do think the Knights will look to hold it for one, unless you get that. Layup, but no, Putman's going to take the three, doesn't score. Connor Sheets with the rebound. 12 seconds. Hayden Parrott out front, attacking on Owen Sensible. And the ball squirted out of there, but we're going to see a foul, Josiah. Yeah, as we saw, Hayden Parrott takes the ball to the rim. Officials saw a little hole. It's hard for us to see from this angle, but... And, you know, there was a, a hold. Yeah, and it is about angles. A lot of times fans get upset. You have to think about the positioning of the officials with a call as well. Um, and obviously from our camera view and our view here in the stands, we didn't have a good look at it. But the foul's called. And, and I think that's something just, again, I, I, I 
like fans to pay a little more attention to where am I and what I see on the yep. floor and where are the officials. Now, they don't always get it right, but neither do the fans, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we got a really good officiating crew here tonight. We do. Hayden Parent makes good on both free throws to push the lead back to three. Bearcats with one more look. Five seconds to go. Will sense the ball attacks. Hayden Parent guarding him. Parent wins that battle with 1.4. Crestview basketball looking to run their full court set with under two seconds. Looking to go along, not there. Good defense by Leith, or excuse me, by Spencerville. And Crestview gets a shot. I think it might have been after the buzzer. Great third quarter for both squads. We're going to go to the fourth, Josiah. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're watching it all on WOSN. One of our sponsors for tonight's game is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. A third quarter where Spencerville scored nine points, Crestview scored 15. I think one of the keys to that 15-point quarter for Crestview is they got to the free throw line. First time in the game tonight, they were nine for nine from the line, Josiah. Yeah, and that was the difference in that third quarter. Spencerville not shooting as well from the free throw line, you know, but also they got back to what they needed to do in the game was get the ball inside, and we saw that throughout that third quarter, getting the ball in the Wren and Connor Sheets' hands, and they had a lot of success, and we saw on the replay here once again, Owen Sensible driving to the rim, but drawing some contact. Picks up the third personal foul on Crestview's point guard, Tommy Hefner. Good backdoor play for the Bearcats. Nice job saving it. Looked like that was going to go out of bounds. Spencerville maintains possession. Carter Sutoff back in the game, as is Jarrett Harding for Crestview. Owen Sensible looking to wheel and deal. Gets to the rim, tries to find a teammate. Unable to do so. Turnover. Here come the Knights. Tommy Hefner down the left side. He's going to pull up. Ren Sheets with the rebound. Tough one. Off the air ball. Hard to defend that defensively. Crestview maintains possession. Connor Sheets from 15. Unable to come up with it. Nice rebound by Carter Sutoff. Again, up and down action here early in the third. Will Sensible gets the first three-pointer for the Bearcats. And that ties it up at 37, Josiah. Yeah, Will Sensible found himself wide open there in transition, and we didn't see that a whole lot in the third quarter. Spencerville being able to get out and get some of those quick shots, and we saw that there. Will stepping into a three, hits that big shot, ties the ball game. I just have a feeling this is going to go down to the last possession, just like last year, but Carter Sutoff reaches over the top, and that is big-time news as Carter Sutoff picks up his Fourth foul early in the fourth quarter. Coach Sensible's got to take him now. And we've talked about Michael Woods earlier in the game, giving uh, Spencerville a lot of good minutes. He's going to need to do so now. Yeah, really an unnecessary foul there by Carter Sidoff. You know, done, did a really good job in the first half of just keeping Sheets farther away from the free or from the basket, but reached in. But we got another foul there. Sheets doing a good job of getting his own rebound off the shot and another foul by Spencerville. Carter Orr now on Ren Sheets. He picks up his first personal. That puts Ren Sheets on the free throw line again. And they're always important, our free throws, but when the game is tied, they're critical. Ren Sheets hits that first one on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. The second one is up. And it is no good. Nice rebound by Carter Orr. Here come the Bearcats on offense. Flare screen on the backside for Owen. Sense the ball attacks the rim. Nice job there. Here comes Carter Orr. Ren sheets with the block. Goes up again. Misses. Good effort. You got to be a man down there tonight. Both teams exhibiting that. Going at it hard. Ren Sheets with the hoop and the harm on transition. Spencerville's done this effectively all night. Crestview does it here. Draws the foul on Will Sensible. Ren Sheets with the bucket. He's going to go back to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Looking to convert the three-point play. 
the old-fashioned way. Yeah, Crestview got up the floor quickly. It's always good to see a big man run, run the floor and was able to get to the position where he wanted and able to knock down another point for this Crestview Knight team. Four points in the quarter for Crestview, all from Wren Sheets. Will Sensible with a three here in the, the early going of the fourth canto. Will Sensible looking to attack. Kellen Putman with the defense. Will Sensible, the freshman, attacks the senior in Kellen Putman, and he says, if you want to go three points the old-fashioned way, I can do it too. Will Sensible now on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. In, out, back in for Will Sensible. Nicely done. We said it just a second ago. Sheets has all the points for Crestview, Ren style with five. Will does for Spencerville with six here in the fourth quarter. Crestview bringing it across half court as Tommy Hafner calls the set. Think they're going to go inside? <laughs> they're going to look either off the dribble or the pass. Nice deflection by Will Sheets. We're going to get a tie up. No, we got a foul call. Yeah, it looks like they called Connor kind of on that late dive in. Kind of went over the back of the Spencerville player, but a good defensive stop there for this Spencerville team. An opportunity for them now to take the lead here if they can make a basket. Connor Sheets with his second personal, the third pers or third team foul for Crestview. Free throws I do think are going to come into play down the stretch as well, Josiah. Yeah, Both so teams. far that's been in Crestview's favor. You know, went 10 for 11 here in the, the third into the fourth, so... We'll see which team can knock down free throws here at the end of the game, which another foul on Crestview and see if they count it. Owen Sensible gets the, the, the bucket off the foul. They're going to count it. We're going to see it. We just saw it on the yeah. replay. Coach Etzler is not happy with that being counted as a good bucket. And Owen Sensible was even really – Surprised that it went down. It's Christmas come early. Yeah. You'll take it, right? I almost call that the uh, NBA continuation <laughs> shot, but Owen with a little poise there, driving to the rim, draws some contact, and makes that shot over the defender. Opportunity here to extend this lead. And he does so at the least famous recipe, chicken free throw line. So Owen Sensible with the three-point play. If you're Crestview, you want to get it down low and attack because the officials are protecting the shooters a little bit both ways. Jared Harding, nice curl cut for Harding to get the bucket. A great response there by Crestview coming down. As you said, great curl and a shot by Owen. Not his night there, but great put back by Michael Woods underneath the basket. Scrappy play by Michael Woods. Offensive rebound, stick back. Spencerville by two. Great night of high school basketball. The crowds are in it. Harding from the elbow. Doesn't get that one. Nice check by Carter Orr. Keeps Ren Sheets off the glass. Will Sensible with the rebound. Here come the Bearcats. Sensible getting everyone set. Just so poised for a freshman. Owen Sensible just the sophomore. Here he comes against Hayden Parrott. Attacks and scores on the spin to the 10. And Coach Doug Etzler is going to take a Metzger Financial Services timeout. We'll take one, two. Spencerville 47, Crestview 43. You're seeing it all right here on WOSN. We appreciate our timeouts being sponsored by Metzger Financial Services. Helping you plan your financial future, you can call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Josiah, a flurry of action here, and Crestview takes a timeout. It's been a lot of fun, and we got a long way to go. Thoughts on what we've seen here in the early part of the fourth quarter? Well, I think we've seen in the last three minutes here as Crestview hasn't gotten the ball into their post players when they did. They've shown a lot of success. You know, we saw that all in the third quarter. Get the ball down low. 
Crestview abandoned it about the last three possessions, and Spenceville went on a run. And out of the timeout, Coach Sensiball does go to the 2-3 zone, anticipating exactly what you said as Coach Sensiball that Crestview took that timeout to re-emphasize getting the ball inside, so they're going to play the zone and protect the paint. Ren Sheets with the ball goes to Connor Sheets. A lot of contact, no call. Spencerville with the defensive board. Owen Sensible brings it across half court. Looks to attack on Hayden Parrott. Not there, kicks it out. Osting with the basketball. He's going to look to attack on Jared Harding. Does so, doesn't go. Kellen Putman with the rebound. Jared Harding, a big offensive possession for Crestview. Harding kicks it out to Hayden Parrott for three. Doesn't go for him. Nice rebound by Evan Osteen. Well, and you see Spencerville doing a great job of boxing out here, getting those rebounds. And we talked about Carter shutoff has been on the bench here with those four fouls early in the fourth quarter here. But this smaller lineup is doing a good job of keeping the bigger Crestview Knights off of those boards, and it's led to some easy buckets. And now Spencerville looking to pull Crestview away from the basket, then penetrate. Owen sends a ball. Doesn't get anything inside. Does a great, uh, makes a great decision to kick it out. And Hayden Parrott's going to pick up the personal. That's going to be his third. But more importantly, it's going to put Spencerville at the free throw line because that is the fifth foul for the Knights in the fourth quarter. Will Sensiball going to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line where he will shoot two. And as you said earlier, this game could come down to the free throw line. Which team is able to knock them down? It's a good start there by Will Sensible, but I'm sure Coach Etzler's not very happy. A foul that far away from the basket, really unnecessary in that situation. And Carter Sutoff comes back into the game for Spencerville. Will Sensible, one for two. Ren Sheets with the rebound. Spencerville with the five-point lead. Big possession for the Knights. Jared Harding attacking. Gets it to the middle of the key. Putman gets to the rim. Give Kellen Putman the bucket. And that cuts it to a three-point lead. Yeah, a little miscommunication there by Spenceville on their switches. They like to switch one through four if they can. Just lack of communication there. And great take there by Putnam to score the two to cut into this Spenceville lead. Spencerville with the three-point lead. Two and change left in the fourth quarter, spreading Crestview out, looking to find those penetration lanes. Carter Sutoff open underneath. They don't find him. Reset. You need being patient works to your advantage. Here comes Osteen. Doesn't get anything. They kick it back out. They're looking for that 90% shot, Josiah. They want to get the bucket at the rim or find themselves on the free throw line. Down to minute 35. It's going to come a point where Coach Etzler's going to have to think about fouling. Will Sensible to the rim. He misses. Kellen Putman with the rebound. Parrott, here come the Knights in transition. Hayden Parrott looking to get to the rim. He does, and he scores. Cuts it to a one-point game. Crestview does not take a timeout. Here come the Bearcats. Yeah, Carter sort of unable to really challenge that shot. With the 4,000, we got a timeout here by Coach Sensible. So Kevin Sensible is going to take the timeout. He's going to go with the 30-second variety. What do you think we're going to see from Spencerville coming out of this timeout, or from both squads for that matter, Josiah? Yeah, well, I think they'll they'll run a set, see if they can get a good shot. If not, pull it out, you know, but you don't want to get too lackadaisical, make a, a silly turnover, give Crestview an opportunity to make a run out. You know, for Crestview, just sitting down, playing solid defense. But, you know, if it comes to a fouling situation, knowing who are we going to foul, you know, right now, I, Will Sensible hasn't shot well from the free throw line. We'll have the ball in his hands. We'll see if that comes into play here uh, for Coach Etzler and his coaching staff. You're right. Will Sensible is three for seven from the line tonight, and he is going to have the ball in his hands. Probably the only kink in the armor for Will Sensible has been the free throw line. He's had an outstanding game for the Bearcats. So it's going to be sideline out of bounds, minute six. It's a long time 
to hang on to the basketball. I look for Crestview to try and put themselves in a position where they can trap the ball, but they got to push it to a trapping corner. Spencerville running that set, as you said, Josiah, looking to see what they have. Connor Sheets, they double the ball. Carter Sutoff with it, kicks it back out. Will Sensible, the freshman, not playing like a freshman in any way, shape, or form. Gets it to his brother, Owen. And he gets it to his teammate. And that is Carter Ord. He is fouled. Yeah, almost a turnover there by Sensible. Carter Ord, it looked like Coach Etzler wanted a jump ball. Might have got a little contact on the way up, but as we said, these free throws are big. Going to be shooting two here and a timeout by Coach Etzler. Timeout by the Knights. Carter Orr going to go to the foul line. That is four fouls on Jared Harding. 36 seconds to go. Carter Orr, that's exactly who you want at the free throw line right now, Josiah. He is 14 for 15 on the year. So an opportunity to extend the lead to three. See how it plays out. Yeah, and Coach Etzler sure calling a play that he wants his guys to run here coming out of this timeout. Obviously, need to box out, you know, with this new rule shooting two mm -hmm. um, here after five fouls. So um, no one and ones anymore yep. um, in the high school game. So, um, but we'll see here. As I said, you know, it's free throws. You know, good teams put games away at the free throw line. So we'll see which team can knock these free throws down and, and really, you know, who can run the set that their coach play, calls at the end of the game. Yeah, Carter or uh, the glue guy for this Spencerville squad uh, in talking with Coach Sensible, been great from the free throw line, has done the little things tonight, has guarded Ren Sheets when needed when Sutoff was in foul t uh, trouble. Going to shoot two now at the Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throw line. Nails the first one, calm, cool, and collected. 16 for 17 from the line now. Or 15 for 16, I'm sorry. He makes this one, which he does. He is now 16 for 17 on the year. Spencerville by three, 34 seconds. You don't necessarily need a three-pointer here if you're Crestview, but you need to get a bucket early in the possession. Sheets with the screen on Harding. Harding gets to the rim, misses it, tipped, doesn't go. Ren Sheets scores it, and Coach Doug Etzler calls timeout. He's going to take a Metzger Financial Service timeout, and with 19.7 and a one-point game, we'll take a quick timeout as well. It's going down to the wire here on WOSN. 19.7 seconds to go. Spencerville with the one-point lead and the basketball. Crestview, they're going to have to look to trap or foul, and they go with the ladder as Kellen Putman picks up the personal. That's his second, and that is going to send Evan Osting to the free throw line. He's going to shoot two with the one-point lead on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Evan Osting second on this squad shooting at a 70% clip. None bigger than these two, Josiah. No, big free throws here as he knocks down the first one. So that makes our score 51-49 now. Bearcats up by two with 15.3. Osting with another free throw. Yeah, we'll get to the point here. If he knocks this down, you know, Crestview still doesn't have to shoot a three here, but needs to get a quick bu bucket. Drains that one, ice in the veins, and Coach Sensorball is going to take a timeout. So with 15.3 seconds to go, Spencerville up 352 to 49. Josiah Crestview is going to bring the ball down. We've seen Spencerville play man zone. What do you think we're going to see in this last 15 seconds of the game? Yeah, I think Coach might give a little bit of full court pressure 
to run a, some of this time off the clock, make it difficult. You know, you don't want Crestview to be able to catch it on the run and go quickly down the court, but maybe force them to dribble, take five, six seconds off the clock before they can get into their set. You know, Crestview, like I said, doesn't necessarily have to shoot a three at this point. If they can go quick, going to the rim, draw some contact, maybe get an and one, you know, throughout it. But we'll see, you know, Really that chess match that we've talked about all night is the adjustments that both coaches are making. We'll see which, what what each coach decides to do. Yeah, and I'm going to throw two other pieces out to you right now, Josiah. First of all, Spencerville has a foul to give. Do you want to use that before or right at half court uh, to take away the fluidity, the thought process for Crestview? And then you also have the thought process with the three-point lead. Do you foul anyway and go with the free throw line instead of giving Crestview a look from deep? Well, that's a good point. You know, maybe if, if Crestview's taking three, four, five seconds off the clock, then foul, you know, force them to, you know, use as much time as possible. And we'll see here, you know, as he's taking this time off, if they go with the foul here. Oh, and turnover. It looks like it'll be Crestview ball. Yep, 7.6 seconds to go now. Well, and that foul may come into play now. Yeah. Play the, throw you the ball in. Mm -hmm. Only give three or four seconds left, but we got another timeout here on the floor. Another timeout. Metzger Financial Services, our timeout sponsor tonight. They help you plan your financial future. You can call Metzger Financial Services at 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So now we have a sideline out of bounds with 7.6, and Spencerville, again, they have that foul that they can give. I think you use it. I think you uh, foul maybe on the dribble. You don't want to foul, obviously, on a shot, but if you can get that foul and make Crestview take the ball out of bounds again, you put yourself in a position where you're set defensively and you make it very tough on the offense. Well, and this is a different situation now with seven seconds. Now we're getting to the point where Crestview almost has to hit a three you know, not a whole lot of time left on the clock. So we'll see, you know, if they can force a longer throw in, take a couple seconds, foul, and then Crestview has to knock down a three to tie this ball game. Here we go. Ren Sheets gets the ball from Harding. It looks like they're going to try and set something up for Parrott. They do, but Spencerville's aware. Jer Harding with a good luck doesn't go. Spencerville with the rebound, and that's going to be your ball game. Jer Harding had a look from three. But it doesn't go, and the Bearcats, just like last year, Crestview had a look at the end, and they don't come away with a bucket. Spencerville wins a tough one, 52-49. to We'll be back to talk about it in detail and also award our Stolly Insurance Hustle Player of the Game. You're watching it all on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School in the Ray Etzler Gymnasium where tonight in the NWC Lid Lifter, the Spencerville Bearcats, they come away with a hard fought 52 to 49 victory over the Crestview Knights. Josiah, let's take a look at the stats. Yeah, as you look at the stats for the visitors, Owen Sensball, number 13, had 13 points on the night. Um, his brother, Will, had 12. Uh, nine apiece from Evan Osting and Carter Sudoff on the night. As we look for the home team, Ren Sheets, once again leading this Crestview Knights team with 17 points. Hayden Parrott and Kellen Putnam both had nine for the home team. Uh, but you look at some of these other stats, the big stats of the night was that free throw line. You know, Crestview shot very well, 11 for 12 from the free throw line but only went to there 12 times on the night compared to the Spencerville Bearcats, went to the free throw line 21 times and made 17 or 16 of them you know, for 76%. You know, so that came into play at the end of the game. You know, and we look at both teams did not shoot very well from beyond the arc. Uh, Spencerville only knocked down one three on the night, and that was Will Sensible. But Crestfield only knocked down two. So both teams, known for their shooting, didn't shoot well from beyond the arc. And another compliment to this Spencerville team. I think, you know, and we're going to get Coach Sensible up here to talk about the game a little bit. Carter Sutoff and Carter Orr just did yeoman's work inside defensively. Yeah, Ren Sheets had 17, but he had to earn every single one of those points tonight. Let's go to our Stolly Hustle Award tonight. Our Stolly Hustle Award is sponsored by Stolly Insurance. Who are we going to go with, Josiah? 
Yeah, we're going with number 13, Owen Sensible, on the night. As we said, known for his outside shot, wasn't hitting tonight, so he had to adjust. And in the second half, decided to be more aggressive. You know, probably got a talking from his father at halftime saying, hey, you can be more aggressive, attack the rim. And we saw that tonight, knocked down some big shots, drew some fouls, got to the free throw line, and that's why he is our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. Yeah, Owen did not back down at all from being aggressive offensively. He missed some threes in the first half. A lot of times shooters will back away from, okay, it's not going down, I'm going to defer to my teammates. He did not do that. The sophomore attacked the rim in the second half and earns our Stolly Hustle Award Stolly, sponsored by Stolly Insurance and deservedly so. We're going to take a break and we're going to get Coach Kevin Sensible up here to talk about tonight's contest when we come back. Again, you're watching it all on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School where Spencerville has defeated Crestview 52 to 49 and it is our pleasure to have the head coach of the Bearcats, Mr. Kevin Sensible with us here in our post game activities. And coach, I'm just going to go there right away. Beginning of the game, I see a 2-3 zone out there from the Bearcats. <laughs> I was a little surprised from the man to man guru. Yeah, guru, tell was, us about it. It was killing me a little bit, but I, it was just I just felt like uh, Crestview's very good when they get into a rhythm and they get to run their stuff, and I just thought that this might take them out of their rhythm. Also, it enabled us to not be in foul trouble early in the game, which we've, you know, we've had the tendency to do. So I, the plan was to just play it for a few possessions, see what happens, and then get back into our man-to-man -man stuff, and that's kind of how it worked out. Absolutely. And then your interior play, would you like to speak about the play of Carter Sutoff and Carter Orr? You're right. Carter Sutoff did end up being in foul trouble throughout the night, but, man, uh, did your other players step up in Carter Orr and Michael Woods, yeah. but overall, the interior play, I thought defensively, even though Ren Sheets had 17 points, your defense in the interior was really good tonight. I thought it was too, especially before Carter Sutoff got in foul trouble. He was doing a tremendous job on Ren. Ren's a handful, and they're going to get him touches as much as they, they can, rightfully so, but our guys did a great job of just battling. You know, that's one of the things that we talked about before the game. I just wanted to see our guys play with some grit. And they really did because they had to. You know, I, I'm almost glad that we're not shooting the ball well right now because we're almost learning. Glad. <laughs> right. We're learning how to win without it, you yeah. know, and that's important too. But I was really pleased. Carter Sutoff played his butt off. Carter Orr played his butt off. Michael Woods did a great job coming off the bench, which he's done a great job for us all year coming off the bench. So, um, you know, it was just a total team effort. I know that's cliche, but it, it, it was. Grady Smith did a good job of coming in and, and pressuring the basketball for us, which is what we wanted him to do. And so it was it was good. It was I was it was an outstanding win and I'll take it any day of the week. And you, you speak to the collective whole. And we talked earlier this week about the kids growing into their roles. And you saw that tonight. Yeah, I thought so, too. You know, I, I, I thought. Uh, you know, with Grady, his role when he comes in the game is to put a lot of pressure on the basketball full court, knowing that he's going to get to rest, you know, soon after. Um, you know, our, our guys just, they just did what they had to do to win. You know, it was like a, this is what, you know, this is what it takes. Yep. And this is what it's going to, you know, because we didn't shoot the ball well. and We haven't been shooting the ball well. So we, we kind of, you know, buckled down and really defended late in the game and, and when we, I thought when we went spread a little bit, we spread them out, it, it kind of hurt them. Owen, Owen could get to the rim a little bit, and there was a lot of space down there. So that's something that we just kind of installed this week, and, and maybe we're going to start using that a little bit more. Yeah, and, and Owen and Will, obviously the ba basketball IQ is off the charts. They did a great job for you tonight as well. Owen was our Stolly Hustle Insurance Award winner tonight, well earned. Was there a little discussion at halftime between Coach and Owen about, hey, the three's not going down, let's attack the rim? Uh, not as much as just attack the rim. I just don't want him to worry about it. You know, like that's what young players tend to, to miss is that that's just one shot. Mm -hmm. His value is so much more than one shot for us. Mm -hmm. I thought he was outstanding on the defensive end. Outstanding. And, you know, that plays so much more into the game than one or two shots. You know, so I was just like, don't worry about any of that stuff. Just play like you can play. You know, just kind of relax and, and let it go. And I thought he did that in the second half. 
He did that in the second half, as did your whole team. A great win for the Bearcats. They even their record to 2-2 two and two on the young season, 1-0 and oh in the Northwest Conference. Crestview, they dropped to 4-1, 0-1 and one, oh and one in conference play. We want to thank everyone uh, on the crew tonight, Kelsey Beimer, Derek Henry, and Josiah Stober, who was my color commentator. want to thank Coach Sensible for coming up and talking to us tonight. And also our producer, our birthday girl, Jennifer Beck. Congratulations to you as well. Until next time, may all of your jumpers hit nothing but the bottom of the net. So long, everybody.